a man of a Sahaba by the name of Abu Talha. al Rumaysa initially was married to a man by the name of Malik, who was a drunkard, he was a non-Muslim, and he died, died in his disbelief. From Malik, al Rumaysa gave birth to two sons, which I'm sure you know the names. Number one is Anas bin Malik, and number two is... It's okay. It's okay. I have five children too. If my wife wasn't looking after them, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> All right. So, subhanAllah, Allah have mercy on our mothers, subhanAllah. Allah have mercy on our mothers. Okay, where was I? Are you paying attention? <laughs> Just kidding. So, a Rumaysa, she gave birth to two sons who, whose names you all know. Number one was Anas bin Malik and number two was Bala, Bara ibn Malik. Anas bin Malik, at the age of four, a Rumaysa, this woman, said that Rasulullah sallallahu needs a servant. Someone to look after his affairs. Not really servant to do this and that, but someone to be with him, operations manager, for, any, for lack of better words. For little things, okay? Or as PA, secretary, if I may use that term. All right, call it a servant, okay? <laughs> needed a servant to look after his affairs and to help him do this and that, get this and get that. So what did she do? At the age of four, at the tender age of four, at the tender age of four, beginning of four, not even ending of four, at the beginning of four, she went to Rasulullah even though she lived about ten, uh, ten uh, houses down the road, she went to the house of Rasulullah Rasul and said, Ya Rasulullah, I would like my son to be your servant and to serve you and to stay with you in your house. So Rasulullah accepted that. Now my question is to you is this. At the age of four is a really tender age. It's an age when you play around with your children. It's an age where my daughter, subhanAllah, Maryam is about three and a half at the moment. So cute. So cute. Oh, you want to bite her cheeks. And then you get afraid that the child security agencies will be called upon you, so you don't bite her cheeks. So you kiss her cheeks. <laughs> so cute, subhanAllah, at that tender age, when they're speaking to you on the Skype and phone, I don't know what she's saying, but <laughs> she's having a deep conversation with me, telling me everything that Aisha's doing and Yusuf's doing. That age, you just want to freeze them at that age. Please, Maryam, don't grow up. Please, we're going to freeze you at that age. Don't grow up anymore. We love you at that age. Anything more and then, anything more and then we unfortunately tend to lose our children or they become older and uh, uninteresting <laughs> at that age beautiful that kiss is like a million dollar kiss mashallah and she runs and she hugs her dad and takes the shoe off her shoes off my off, off my feet and takes my socks and then she gets me water at that age mom mom dad wants water she runs and she gets water subhanallah amazing Allah. so at that tender age of four which mother would do that? Either one of two types of women would do it. Either someone completely mad or someone completely sane but knows what's right for her kids. And that was a rumeza. You see, this boy grew up in the house of Rasulullah. So much so that of the descriptions of Rasulullah that we have available to us of how the man Muhammad looked. Right? The only ones who described Rasulullah are the little Sahaba that were little at that time. The only descriptions we have are from Anas and from Abdullah ibn Umar and from a few other Sahaba who were all little, small at that time. Abu Bakr never described Rasulullah. Umar couldn't describe Rasulullah. Why? Because whenever they were in his presence, they lowered their eyes. They were in so much humility and humbleness in his presence that they could not bear to raise their eyesight to look at him. So it was the little ones that looked at him, you know? The little ones would look at him. And so it was Anas who described Rasulullah in great detail. And Anas radiallahu used to say, because he had become blind towards the end of his life, he said, my eyes have become blind, but I can see my beloved Rasulullah in my dreams. So he used to see Rasulullah as well in his dream, even though he had become blind. MashaAllah. Anas, the Prophet servant, little servant, became such a righteous man. And the Prophet made so much dua for this man 
Made so much dua that Anas would say, Wallahi, I could not move a single stone except that I found gold underneath it. Right? Meaning that he couldn't do anything except that Allah would give him wealth and provisions. Until when he passed away, he had no less than 126 children. 76 of whom passed away before him. <laughs> Subhanallah. Obviously, they weren't all from the same wife. <laughs> Okay? Anyway, but the whole point was the man was exceptionally blessed and the man was exceptionally rich. When he passed away, he had three wives. And when he had these three wives, he left money behind for them. And when he calculated the amount of money that he left behind for each of them, it's approximately, approximately after my calculations for what money was worth at that time to now, approximately about 36 million US dollars for each one of his wives. And that is, by the way, after you calculate the fact, after you calculate the fact that the children, that the wives get one-eighth if there's children. In an inheritance law, the wives get one-eighth. And if he has three wives, then that's a third of one-eighth. So that's, how much did I say, 56 million? The 36. So 36 million, that's one-third of one-eighth. Amazing. Masha Allah. The best of this world and the best of the hereafter. Best of this world and the best of this hereafter. Why? Because of this woman who sacrificed her deepest desires in order to please, in order to 